no. take a look at those implants. Is the patient numb? Does he have any? No, 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 no. I don't understand no. that. <laughs> That's great. <laughs>Yeah, okay. your planning is great, just so we can cut to the chase. The planning is great. You have great screw access uh, planning for number 29. Uh, you know, the other implants are a little bit, I feel, uh, you know, long and deep, but it looks like you found a, a really good uh, trajectory to, you know, I guess this was pre-extraction. You found a very nice trajectory to place the implant. So tell me about the challenge and your concern with the site. Uh, first of all, the bruxism, which you have a, a, a beautiful history with this patient. So the uh, the two implants, what you can see, it was done in the other office. And uh, before that, I have a long history with bruxism with this patient. Uh, Actually, with the first night guard, the chew through in one week, I think. Um, she can eat everything. <laughs> bruxism and soft tissue. When there is bruxism, Ziv, how do you think through it? And soft tissue, how do you, uh, how do you uh, assess that as well? Uh, what's the key when there's bruxers? Is there a communication? No matter what you do, is there going to be a chance for failure? How do we, we, we protect ourselves when there's that issue? Great. So bruxism, you, you always have to take into account that your patients will break everything that you do. That's, that's always an assumption. It's not going to break the integration. That's very rare for occlusal overload to make an implant fail or make an implant break. Although I've seen it in 20 years, but very rarely you can count on one hand how many times. So bruxism is going to come into play later when it comes to occlusal occlusion design and how to decide, you know, design the forces. You already addressed some of it with your planning by making this crown screw retained. So the trajectory is great for the occlusal forces, which are the obviously the strongest. They're not the destructive forces. The destructive forces are lateral forces, obviously, but that's already addressed. And the other thing uh, I, I want to, um, uh, you know, kind of bring your attention to is when anytime you deliver implant restorations, whether they're bruxers or not, you know, imagine every patient is a bruxer. You want to always follow the recommended torque by the company, meaning the torque for the screw, the retention screw. And all patients, all implants, all screws lose torque in the first two weeks. So you torque the implant down or you torque the, the abutment down or torque the crown down to the recommended torque, bring the patient in two weeks later and re-torque to the recommended torque. That's all. Uh, nice. and that, that's, that's the protocol. So that's about occlusion. About soft tissue, let me take a look here at the... Um, yeah, yeah, yes, there is obviously a concavity, uh, but I feel that you could potentially use a crestal a crestal lingual incision and mobilize this tissue to the buckle. So you have some attached tissue around the implant. And you asked me also in your email about flap design. So one way is to do an, inter, uh, an intracircular around the adjacent tooth. And if you didn't want to involve the molar implant, you could very simply just go around it and do a little vertical right in here. So then you can do a full thickness buckle flap. Uh, flap design wise, your, your, your um, mental foramen is not is somewhere here. You can do a small vertical, okay? Do a small mm -hmm. vertical. This way you avoid the soft tissue on the molar. That's, that's number one. And lastly, let's take a look at the ridge. So it's not a great ridge, obviously. There's some bone die back, but I feel like with a little bit of tweaking, you can definitely get an implant in there. And these are my comments about your planning. I would choose a shorter implant. Your implant right now is 12.5. If you can get closer to like a 10, okay, why is that? Mm -hmm. Why a 10? Because your implant currently is at the bone level and there's a there's missing bone in here or very thin bone. If you choose a 10 millimeter implant, you can 
I would recommend you move it a slight bit to the lingual, and then you can bury it a little bit more and st still be at a safe distance from the canal. You wanna be two millimeters away. And if we are placing our implant a little bit more lingual and tilting it to the buckle, I feel like that's going to accommodate a good implant. And uh, you know, obviously you don't wanna repeat what the other doctors did there. Uh, you know, we're all allowed to, to make some mistakes, but uh, hopefully the patient is not numb uh, no. Take a look at those implants. Is the patient numb? Does he have any? No, 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 no. I don't understand no. that. <laughs> That's great. God, God uh, loves the other doctor because th these implants are, this one is borderline and this one is in the canal. Yeah, so just, you know, take it carefully. So here are the comments that I, I, I made uh, for your case. I wrote down here, implant trajectory is okay. Uh, use a shorter one so you have the option to bury more, maybe move it slightly to the lingual. A mid crestal incision uh, or, you know, crestal incision or more to the lingual rather, not mid, more to the lingual, a possible vertical on the buckle of the implant. And yeah, the other implants are just, you know, nothing you can do. They're also malpositioned, by the way. They're not just in the nerve. They're, they're not in a good angle. But again, every, you know what you know. That's, that's my oh. comment, Dr. Fulton. I hope uh, this was helpful to you. Yes, the, at the closure, uh, I should close it, move the tissue buckly and close with the healing healing screw and suture around it? Yeah, that would be ideal. If you have enough stability and no, the patient's not wearing any device on top of it, do it as a one stage. This way you don't have to go back in. I know the ridge is not huge. We all want more bone, but I feel like you can work with what you got. Okay, thank you very much.